Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a little history going back and reviewing my Tamiya RC car collection throughout the years. Now unfortunately, I don't have all the cars that I used to own going back to my teenage years. As you guys can probably imagine, decisions throughout life, changes and stuff, I, some of the cars broke and I got rid of them and threw them away. A lot of regretful decisions that I wish I'd kept them. Lots of times you just didn't have the space and you're moving and getting married and switching homes and you don't keep stuff and then you look back and say, man, I really wish I'd really kept those early RC cars, especially the ones from Tamiya that I once owned. So I thought I'd go and look through, you know, some of the cars using some pictures I found online, discuss a little bit some of the cars I owned. And then we'll come back and go through some of the ones, like the ones you see here on the table, and the ones, some of the ones on the shelves uh, that I have built in more recent years and just gonna discuss some of the modifications or decisions I made on those cars. So we'll go, to, we'll go back and kind of look at those cars in just a moment. Real quickly, I wanna say, as you might notice, I've done a little bit of uh, additions to the studio, aside from the monitor, which I added, but you should see the Top Force Evo up here uh, doing its drive review. Um, on the monitor, um, I've extended the brick, the fake or faux brick wall back there. Just vinyl, it hangs up on the wall. But now we don't have that tacky, you know, ends to the wall, which I thought looked really stupid. And the table here. This was just a white solid table. I've had this uh, vinyl adhesive uh, wood look to it, and I'm hoping that'll reduce the glare. There's so much glare off the white table. So let me, know down in the comments if you uh if you're one of my regulars do you like the changes to the studio if you think it's better or if there's something you don't like you know let me know that as well so let's get over down to the computer where i'll look at some of those uh cars i owned in the past and then we'll get back here to the table to finish up with what i have now so i'll be right back all right guys so the very first tamiya rc car i owned it wasn't the very first car I had some Nikos and stuff you'd buy at the store. The first RC car that I actually owned from Tamiya was the Hotshot 2. You guys can see here on the screen, we've got the, you know, the, that cool box art for the Hotshot 2, which of course was a follow-up to the original Hotshot. I painted mine black. I would just use uh, tester paint or something with a brush and it was horrible. I would paint it underneath, but it was just, you want to use spray paints now. You know, I was just a teenager, but it looked just like this. You know, back then you just had nickel cadmium packs and the brush motor. Um, I may have used the 540 Mabuchi at first, but I'm sure I upgraded to, you know, something from one of the other brands, something from Tower Hobby that I would have picked up to make it go a little bit faster. So you had the red, you know, plastic shocks and you know that it was four wheel drive and you know, it was noisy and suspension on this car was not very good. Uh, it's a classic nowadays, but you know, they were not uh, very competitive in terms of what they could do. But you know, you had, because you can see you just, you had your driver in there and you had that little metal on the top there above the driver. Um, you had that little um, metal piece that went through the front to help stabilize the front mono shock, um, all the goodies. I just thought the car looked so cool. And I remember I was so disappointed because when I bought this car, I was building it in the front A arms. I believe it was the top, but it may have been the entire front and bottom. They were not in the kit. It was sealed, brand new Tower Hobbies. And I, I don't know if I contacted Tower Hobbies or what, but I ended up having to go to Tamiya to get them to ship them. They, it's really weird. I've never heard of this happening, but they just forgot to put one of the pieces in. And I had to wait, you know, back then you didn't have anything more than snail mail for everything. And I remember calling, I think it was New Jersey or somewhere and wherever they had one that I got a hold of someone and they shipped it to me. But I mean, it was like at least a month. It may have been two months, it took forever. And it was an RC car competition, a little at a place I knew with some other people. and. I was gonna win that. My car was better. The hot chip was better than the competition, but I didn't get to enter because I was waiting for the A arms and the mail. I was so ticked off. But yeah, those are the uh, that was the uh, the good old hot shot too. And what I ended up doing at one point was 
after I owned it for a while, is I wanted to upgrade it, you know? And one of the upgrades you could do, besides a motor, was getting rid of that mono shock and go with the two with that little metal shock tower deal that I found in probably RC Car Action or one of these catalogs. I ordered it from someone who custom made it. And it came, uh, look just like this picture you guys have seen on screen right now with the uh, blue metal shocks. Pretty good shocks, they were stiff. And that was supposed to improve the suspension or the mono shock, and it was better from what I remember. And we're talking 30 plus years ago, this would have been around 1988 probably. It was still not good because the car was not really competitive class by any means at all. So that was my very first Tamiya RC car. Um, a few years later, in 1990, and then I just graduated high school, but it feels like I should have been younger than that. But the very, uh, the second car I got was the Astute. Now this is a cool looking car. As you guys can see on the box art there, it was fantastic. And this was one of the very first Tamiya RC cars that was more competitive class. It was designed to actually be able to be competitive. And I know there was someone, I can't remember the driver names, but they did really well on the circuits with, you know, probably a heavily modified version of the Astute. But it was one of the first, I think the, um, was it the Avante? Maybe that was the, you know, those were the two at the time. Uh, but the Stoop wasn't crazy expensive. And it had the plastic shock, which those were fine. But it was, it was a, a car that was relatively easy to break. It was not necessarily brittle, but just the design. Uh, it was a bit more complex. This had the really high uh, pitch uh, gears. So, so it was so quiet compared to the, uh, the 32 pitch big gears that you're used to use and stuff like the hot shot. And it had a ball diff in it. I don't think this had a slipper clutch. I think that they added that to the super astute, I believe. But if I'm wrong, you guys will let me know for sure. But um, it, was, it still had the, the ball diff. And I know the gearbox wasn't sort of the great, I never the greatest compared to the, the ones you could upgrade it to. Um, but I never had any problems. Now we're talking at a time when brushless motors were just a thing of future. So I know I'd put like a Trinity um, brushed um, motor in there. And as terms, I don't know if I had, I think around this time I got my very first ESC, which was from Futaba. <laughs> so it was just a night and day difference, not having that lag as you're waiting for the mechanical speed controller and servo to move across the contacts and all the headache that came along with that and getting stuck or having to keep it greased and the, you know, the, uh, all the stuff that was involved with a mechanical speed controller. So that's what I had in, in the, uh, in the Astute and I had upgraded the motor, but you know, like I said, it had the, the ball differential. It came with seal ball bearings, I believe in the gearbox. I think it just had the bushings and the rest, but I had had ball bearings. I would transplant from one car to another. So I, I had ball bearings throughout the entire car, but it came with the nice sealed ones inside the gearbox. So you guys can look at the different pictures as I rotate through here during the video. I painted mine orange. As you can see, some of these, they almost look like they had gone with that red. I had gone with an orange. Again, I just painted it and then put white on top, you know, behind the paint to sort of protect it and that's something they recommended doing. It looked pretty good. I didn't paint the clear underbody that goes under or around the, the chassis, but the chat, it was Velcro, like the Top Force Evo works, really helps keep stuff out of the of there. But again, this was higher end. Uh, it had a fiberglass chassis, fiberglass uh, shock towers. Again, that ball differential, seal ball bearings in the gearbox. Uh, just a really nice and really fun RC car that had a lot of higher end components. And I remember my cousin who was very much into the RC cars and got me into them. They had moved on to, from Tamiya. I always loved the Tamiya look. He would always rib me about why you keep messing with those are not gonna compete. Are they, are they, he was right, lots of times they were a lot, the Tamiya competitive cars were much more expensive than the RC cars, some you know, team associated and low C stuff like that at that time. So yeah, the Astute was my second RC car from Tamiya. Then, so we moved from 1988 with the Hot Shot 2 
which I had borrowed money from my grandpa and paid him back to buy it. Got the Astute, I was working uh, in the summer and was able to uh, buy that. I was getting ready to start college. And then I moved forward from 1990 to 1997 is when I got the Dyna Blaster. This is such a fantastic truck. This had similarities there. It had the ball differential, it had the slipper clutch, um, a lot of higher end components. It had just the regular plastic black shocks. Um, and that one I know I put a Trinity brush motor, Trinity ES, uh, brushed ESC in there. And again, this is around 1997. I painted it solid yellow. So that was the, my color scheme, but I really, it really looks, looks so fantastic. So I had, um, you know, it had the, to me, a racing decal you could put on the tires. I, I used those stock wheels or rims. I had gotten some Goodyear decals to put on. And I, again, I wish I had photos of all this stuff. But you can see how this looks with the red and, and that. I know I did mine yellow. I just can't remember here. I think some of that's painting, some of that's decals. But uh, I believe it was that red and yellow scheme, mine was just solid, solid yellow. And I had that up until a marriage around 2008, moved into the first house and it was sort of dry rotting some of the pieces and it had fallen apart and I just tossed it. I wasn't in the hobby. I was completely out of RC at that time. And of course I'm kicking myself now because I could certainly get the parts, the gearbox and that would have been fine. And I could have restored this thing and oh my God, I. That ticks me off more than way more than the hot shot, which I don't know at what point the hot shot two got tossed by my parents or something or whatever. But yeah, this was fantastic. I got different um, aftermarket wheels and put on-road tires, but the front the front were very thick. Um, they were very wide, I should say, wide tires. So they weren't not the best for steering, uh, but they had a cool look. But I, you know, ideally. I, you want the slightly narrower tires on the front of the Dyna Blaster. So this is one, you know, they had the, the Dyna Blaster and then there was a car version. And then there's the uh, the stadium truck, was it the Dyna, uh, escaping me, I just saw it a while ago. But you guys know there was, there was an, a cheaper version of this one as well by Tamiya. And then around 2000, 1999 to 2000, somewhere around there, I got my brother, my youngest brother, a Blackfoot. And it ended up getting passed to me at some point as he got older, but I got him that. I think I went completely stock on that, except for I bought the ball bearings. I don't remember if we painted the driver. We went, you know, it already had the hard shell painted body and all that, so just applying the decals. It was fun. He had a lot of fun for that over the years. Ended up getting handed down to me, like I, like I said, and I had it at the last house even two years ago, but it was a lot of parts. Um, I was missing stuff for it. And since the Blackfoot is still in production now, that one didn't really bother me throwing that out because I can get a new one. There's really no advantages that I'm aware of to having the old one over the one you can buy right now. So that's the ones that I have had in the past, the four there that I no longer have access to for various reasons. All right, let's get back over to the studio now. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. So as you guys saw there, sort of overview, just using some photographs on my computer, the four cars that I own that I no longer have access to. But around 2008, you know, it wasn't long after I had ditched the broken uh, Dyna Blaster parts. That's whenever I picked up the Durga. This looks cool. Now, this came with the more modern photograph, smaller box, but it was a kit. But it, it, it's not the traditional one like you see in these ones behind me here. But this one looked pretty cool. And I went with, it came with a 540 motor. I know I didn't use the Mabuchi. I think I put that Trinity motor that had been in the Dyna Blaster, but I still have that motor in here. And this is a four wheel drive, belt driven, um, uses the plastic to me as shocks, but again, those, those shocks are actually really good shocks. Um, it has uh, this foam that goes on the inside here, or, you know, around on the sides of the body. You can see here it's in pieces. Uh, you have the center gear here, the motor mounts in the center of the car. It's gonna be difficult to see just using the camera where I am now. But all the electronics are out of this car. Um, it's in pieces. It can be fixed. I've just never gotten around to it. And the reason why is 
back uh, oh a year or so probably after I started my YouTube channel I did a brushless upgrade I'd seen the brushless motors the cheap ones that I love to use on eBay and I got one of those Google RC 4300 kV motors with the 60 amp ESC but you can still buy the exact same kits nowadays a little bit less expensive than they were then and I added it to this and of course on 2s I noticed you know at that speed the front tires were starting to balloon but they were okay but I made the dumb decision of going to 3s on 4300 kV and you can imagine this thing was ridiculously fast I didn't have any way of testing speed back then I could have attached a smartphone but I didn't think about it I didn't have a GPS reader so I suspect it was doing 45 to 50 miles an hour which on a Tamiya that's designed for a 540 brush motor that is always going to end well so at the very end of that video one of the gearboxes you could hear it that it wasn't running right I stripped the gear or it's sheared off or it's melted or I've got the ball diffs are messed up possibly I think this has ball diffs in it pretty sure it does correct me if I'm wrong on that I am sure it does and um, something's messed up it could even be the belt there's a belt you know it goes between the front and rear gearboxes something's messed up so at that time YouTube was really busy despite the fact that my channel was way smaller in terms of subscriber count um, I had a lot of sponsors five or six sponsors I was overwhelmed with products to review it was a nice time in terms of that I didn't have time to fix this I didn't get around to it and as you can see it's set now and now I'm like, I got screws laying here again now it'd be hard the hardest part would be I need to I need to get an instruction manual to make sure I know what screws go where which I know I can get one of those online and I, I just probably go back to a lower kV brushless motor and make sure I stick to 2s but I got to figure out what's wrong with the gearboxes I know some of the screws were half stripped so it's some it's fixable it's just a matter of dedicating the time to do it because it is a pretty nice looking buggy and it's one that I really do need to fix in fact I had a guy probably two or so years ago from Germany emailing me um, probably saw it maybe in the video I did uh, wanting to buy it from me I guess he was having trouble finding one and I was like this is ridiculous I'm not gonna ship a car to Germany he finally just he just didn't email me again I guess he realized it was not feasible so then after that around 2014 I got this big boy the lunchbox man I always wanted this my friend had one but I just never got around to it. I was so stuck with the buggies these are more cartoonish but wow, these are so much fun my, my daughter who was the youngest at the time she's no longer the youngest of the family but at the time she was I only had two kids at the time she would watch a lot of YouTube and she'd watch a lot of RC rock crawler videos and stuff I wish she still was into that uh, she's good at driving them still whenever I do get her to help me and I said I'm gonna get one and I, this was you know lunchbox is inexpensive so I got it um, and I remember building it upstairs there at the old house and uh, it was Katie's lunchbox man um, the brush motor in here it comes with the Mabuchi of course I put an axle I don't know why I was not real like I was just getting back into the hobby so I put an axle in here the Mabuchi had been fine there was no reason to buy the axle what I thought it would have been better now I know that's dumb I got some Tower Hobbies metal oil filled shocks which on this truck I should never have done that you can't really get this to have a lot better suspension just by going better shocks it's a lot of this just this design some of them have leaked so what I need to do is I still got the, the box I mean I, I'm the stock shocks are in there which are just friction I need to take these oil filled off just put the stock ones on they look better they're designed for this truck and it's going to be probably no different this is just so tense it's just so bad those little spring mechanisms that goes on this rear gearbox here that uh, allows you when you go in reverse then you kick it in forward and the wheelie bar comes down it makes this truck really easy to ride wheelies and they've either they've busted are falling off or something they wear out over time I know I can get them online I just need to go I need to replace those I imagine that's a real I'm not look I'm sure this is a real common thing all of them they break or get bent out of shape that really helps it spring back and 
and the new wheelies it still does them it's just harder now with those things broken so that's what i need to do uh as you can see i painted it yellow it's got some road rash on it um but i went with stock look uh i used i think i used tester yellow spray i did use spray paint um and then i put i'm gonna put clear coat over it some tester clear coat to kind of protect it and you can see that shine i like it i think that was a good decision it's not going to really protect the paint much but it did help a little bit and then i added lights to it. i got a light kit off amazon i don't have any battery here handy but i've got some red i didn't really do it right back at the time and installing some rear red brake lights but in the housing of the lunch box van you can put those um you know behind the plastic lenses here i've got white lights i'm sure almost everybody does this so it's not like some big unique thing but it really does look cool especially at night having the lights come on the the van lighting it up no sound kits or nothing you know it just got just lights and that's fine i think a sound kit would probably be kind of cool on this but again i don't the ones i've done recently because i was able to get those from gt power in exchange for reviews but I'm, I don't typically want to go out and buy a sound kit. But again, that's the things I can think of offhand. I usually use a lithium ion uh, six cell type looking pack, but they're of course 2S lithium ion that came with the Henglong tanks because they have the Tamiya connectors. Because I got the Tamiya brushed ESC in here that came with, so let's come with it. The one that came with it was the one, I don't remember the, what it, which one, the model number for, but it has the, uh, it, it will run the brush motors and the sensor brushless ESCs, it's like a two-in-one. And at that time, they, they were defective. They didn't want to program to work with the brushed motor. They're supposed to. I called to me, and the guy was really cool, said, hey, you know, we can send you one new one, or we can just send you just a brushed one. I said, just send me the brushed one. So I had to ship it back to him, and he made a flat rate box, shipped it to California, and they sent me a new one. Then they sent me a check in the mail, for the flat rate they, they paid for my shipping and it was so cool i got a check with the tamiya logo on it it couldn't have been for more than i don't know four or eight dollars i wish i'd kept the check it was cool i had the tamiya it was a tamiya check like i mean an employee or something so that's the uh two there uh, let me pause the video and then i'll grab another car off the shelf and we'll talk about it all right so now we're going to jump ahead quite a few years from 2014 to just the last two years I was so preoccupied with the drones and all the stuff I had to review that I didn't have the time back then to really dedicate to doing something like this because I love these Tamiya RC car kits. And now that things have slowed down, I can d dedicate myself to some of these. And I really enjoy building them and you guys seem to like watching them because these get a little better views than some of the toy stuff I've been review reviewing on the channel in recent years. So jumping forward, um, I got this Sand Viper would be the next one that would have been sometime i guess maybe summer of 2021 maybe it's relatively recent on the channel and i used some orange uh just some orange paint off the shelf at um the local store you know it's not the tamiya paints but it turned out fine i like the orange look a lot of them have the yellows or different colors i hadn't seen one painted like this i think it looks pretty sharp I need to get this one back out and drive it again. This one's hardly ever been driven. Got the spike tires on the rear. These are perfect for on-road on the front, but these rear ones will go bald pretty quick. Again, this is just rear wheel drive using the DT02 chassis. Uh, yeah, and I got a uh, 3300 KV uh, Google RC brushless. I wanted to go brushless on this. And on 2S, it's fine. I use these little 2S packs back here. And it's just fine. There is a quite a bit of cogging on this one. Again, that's probably the combination of the gearing with, of course, the sensorless brushless ESC. And on all these cars I'm going to show you now, I'm using like either a Dumbo RC radio system or on the newest one here, the uh, AcroShot. I'm using a uh, old controller from my DHK. But this is I'm using the Dumbo RC. You just buy a receiver. And they're like 15 bucks and then you can just bind it to one of the your dumbbar c i got three dumbbar c uh controllers all from different stuff i've reviewed one of them was sent to view other ones came with some of the rc cars and you can use them with, they're great controllers they're, those in the fly skies there's no reason to buy those real high-end ones these dumbbar c's are great and it, you don't have to buy a whole kit just get yourself a receiver so that's what i got controlling these so again you got the brushless system in here run 2s and uh, 
it was a, bit, a little bit of cogging, but like I said, this one's a fun one I need to get out again and take off road. Then the next one I got, which is still probably my favorite RC car, not just to me, just all the cars I have, the good old Blitzer Beetle. This thing is awesome. As you can see, I still have the side mirrors on, stuff that I haven't broken. One of them I bent and kind of glued back in place. A lot of stuff that people either take off or they break it really quickly. Um, I didn't put the flames on this one. It was something that I, at the time, thought it was very distracting and I didn't, I wanted to be a little different. Now that I'm starting to like the flames, seeing some of the other people and I'm like, you know what? I may add them at some point, just wipe the body down and get it clean and add them. Cause I did use the Tamiya uh, black paint. It's one of the bottles behind me. Uh, primer coat after you wash the body to make sure it's clean. Cause this is a hard body. Primer it, then follow up with a black coat of paint. And I think it looks pretty sharp even like this. Stock tires and wheels, everything else on there. Um, it does have full ball bearings throughout. This is going with that 4,300 KV brushless motor that was in that Durga. And on 2S, it's no problems on the Blitzer Beetle. I've heard of people going 3S on these. Probably depends a bit on your KV rating as well. Um, but they say it's almost uncontrollable. But 2S, no problems whatsoever. Got the little uh, cooling thing off of another car of mine. I thought it helped keep this brush, this motor cool. And I think it looks cool itself on the car. Um, and as you might notice here, I got this white LEDs on the top here. And um, this came off of like a Subotac or some Jeep that I reviewed years ago. And I used some double-sided tape to put it on here and wired it down into, I think it's just right now powered off of the, one of the spare ports on the receiver. Just, uh, you know, changing out the plug on it to a, uh, like a servo plug. And it, uh, it, look, it, it looks awesome. Again, I don't have any battery here, but it was really bright white. Kind of gives it that off-road, you know, I was kind of a little bit going for like a uh, Mad Max, but it doesn't have that rustic look or all the spikes and, well, you know, but I did something off-road with the cooling fin and the lights on here. Now, I didn't add the driver. I've got him up here on the shelf. I need to get the proper paints to put them in because they didn't have to hide a lot of these wires and stuff. And I got one of those just those 120 amp ESCs in here, which isn't really going to be 120 amp. But on 2S, they work fine. They're very compact and you can use those generic program cards with it, which I have. So 4300 KV, little generic blue ESC in there. And this has one of those sound kits. This one has the wired one. It's not Bluetooth and it sounds awesome. I have a separate video, a couple videos before this, where I show those sound kits. You can hear them and all that. There's no reason to go over that in this video. But it, it looks, I think, of all the cars I have, this is one where the sound kit really does fit its style. It just really sounds awesome on this. So this is one of my favorites. It just looks fantastic. The sound kit adds that extra little... Uh, means of realism to it and i just absolutely love it this is my favorite rc car all right let's uh pause the video and get the last two and we'll finish, wrap this video up all right guys the last two i know this video is probably becoming a little bit long so there'll be chapters you can skip around if you already didn't notice that to what car you might want to check out these are the two most recent builds again these are all within the last year this one within the last few weeks so within the last year i built the Top Force Evo. This is around $350 um, at the time I got it. Now I've seen them more like $450. Though I did see a brand new sealed in the box on the Facebook Marketplace for $350, which is a pretty good price, but it wasn't it wasn't local, um, and I don't need another one. But yeah, this one I went for the straight factory look into, on it, and this is probably my prized one in terms of how it turned out without any kind of stupid painting here, because I'm not good at painting. And I used appropriate Tamiya paints um, that I was able to pick up with this. I bought this one from Amazon from a seller and I got the paints from, I don't know, Tower Hobbies or eBay or something. But anyway, it turned out spectacular right down to the decals. This, you know, the Top Force Evo, again, this is a higher end. This is my highest end than not only that I currently own, but it would even be better than the original Astute. This is just really great on every level. It's got the front and rear gearbox because of course it is four wheel drive. It has these uh, metal, 
Dude, these are aluminum oil-filled shocks, and these are, shocks are great. Now, again, the plastic to me is are just fine, but these shocks are a step up. These are these are phenomenal. Yeah, the car just works great. And the thing that really um, surprised me the most was just how exceptional this handles. You know, this is saying books. I don't. I've done two top speed tests. You see, one of them is, is at the is in the original video. Now I can't remember the exact speed, but I want to think it was in the mid 30s or something, but it really books on 2S. I'm using a 3900 KV, this black motor in here. Um, I don't know if we can see it very easily. It's tucked up in here, but a 3600, uh, did I say? 3900. And then I just, because of the, of the limited space, I went with one of those cheap blue no-name ESCs, which aside from a fluke loss of power which I think was in the second video after this, he was playing in the background, uh, it, it regained it. So it was probably that ESC, but it's worked fine and it's fast and it handles so well. So this is higher end. This has a carbon fiber body, uh, chassis, excuse me, carbon fiber chassis. Sometimes I want to call it a body and that's not right. Carbon fiber chassis and the carbon fiber shock towers. Um, and then of course it has that Lexan tray that goes around the chassis which you could paint this if you wanted you could paint it to match this which i've seen a lot of people used to do with the astutes um this is a step up from the uh the uh the original astute which was um you know different than this one this one's a carbon fiber uh and this one but uh yeah it's just a step up and it's it's really fantastic uh compared to the you know the some of the earlier ones just a high-end high-end car with the you know, the brushless, I use like I said, I go 2S, four wheel drive, metal shocks. I'm kind of rehashing myself here, but I just love looking at this thing. This is really nice, high end, competitive off road car, but it's not cheap, so keep that in mind. No sound kits, no gimmicks, no lights, nothing. Something like this it would be stupid to put a sound kit on. So, yeah, that's this is my highest end one. Then my most recent build here, as you guys can see, is the Acro Shot. And again, I just did a video with it in the Blitzer Beetle where I go over the sound kits. This does have the wire, uh, wireless or Bluetooth kit in it. And it looks, I think it sounds pretty cool and fits this one okay, putting that sound kit. This is, of course, just two wheel drive. It uh, has the Tamiya black uh, plastic uh, oil filled shocks. I did put well, full ball bearings because you don't want to run those plastic bushings that comes with this. This is running a 3600 kV, and you can see it probably from the video a camera. It's a red and black, I believe, was it, motor. Um, I just like the look of it with this kit. Again, it's another no-name. And one of those 60 amp Google RC, the same one as a Sand Viper has. Um, you know, those, and this, the, like that came with the 4300 kV motor at the time. So I've swapped the Blitzer Beetle to one of the blue ones because the ES, the Google RC one was vibrating. The fan was driving me nuts. So. But I got one of those Google RCs in here and then I got that Bluetooth sound kit in here and it sounds cool. But yeah, this is pretty quick. It's not, it's not the same, even on, you know, even though it's only on 2S as well, it's not nearly as fast. Again, that's gearing and such and pinion gears. And, because this one, I have not done a speed test, but it's probably only in the 20 to 25 mile per hour. Again, 3600 kV is not, you know, super slow, but yeah, it's not real, real quick, but you know, that's fine. We don't need, I'm not looking for crazy top speeds on these. This one would be the fastest of, of I don't remember the sand vibe, it's been a while. This is probably the fastest, but the Blitzer Beetle moves along pretty good too. It's probably the second quickest, but it, Blitzer Beetle has the highest KV motor, but you know, the gearing stuff is going to affect that top speed and acceleration depending on how you gear it. So yeah, that's the history of my cars from the, all the way back to the Hot Shot 2, all the way up to the Acro Shot. Now, there's Tamiya channels out there that have a buku amount of, of Tamiya cars. This is a small amount of cars. Even if I had all the originals, you know, Adam or Adam's Playground, he's got a shelf of them. Uh, the RC Icons guy's got an unfathomable amount. He's probably got, he's got more in boxes than I've ever owned, just that haven't been built. So <laughs> there's a bunch of them out there. All right, guys, that wraps up the video on my Tamiya RC car history. If you like these videos and all the other stuff that you've seen on my channel, then please do consider subscribing. And while you're at it, click that bell, and way you're notified every time I upload a new video. And as always, guys, 
Have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, side, side.